thank you. This morning, we're going to worship God and we're going to give praise. Hallelujah. I thank God for, uh, for Pastor Jolly. Hallelujah. For allowing me to preach on his platform, sharing the gospel, to spread the gospel to the nations of the world. I'm so excited this morning that we can talk how good God is. Today is a day for your miracle. Hallelujah. And I believe that the Spirit of God is witnessing to your heart. Wherever you are, you're sick in body. Today is a day for a miracle in your life. So listen to the word of God. And I believe that God has given me this message this morning to preach on those lines that the servant of God has spoken this morning that Jesus, he's the healer. Hallelujah. To many people, miracle days are over, but I want to tell you it is in full force now. Hallelujah. Because God is in operation. All you have to do is believe and Jesus will do the work in your life. This morning, once again, greetings to you in the wonderful name of Jesus, wherever you are. Hallelujah. If you're driving, just pull off the road and listen to this wonderful word of God. You're going to be blessed in your heart. Hallelujah. As I'm going to preach the same thing that Jesus preached, the other prophets have preached, uh, Pastor Johnny has preached. Hallelujah. It is the same word today because it is the same word that Jesus also have spoken while he was upon the face of the earth. And today I'm going to minister to you the acceptable year of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now is a time. Now is an ex accepted time. Hallelujah. When we start postponing things, it's going to get worse and not better. And this morning, if you can act upon the word of God, receive the word right now. Because the Bible says he sent his word and healed all diseases. Hallelujah. Whatever the disease may be, whatever the sickness may be, whatever condition you are at this present time today, I'm speaking to you that God is your healer. The Bible says in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now, this is what Jesus was speaking and he delegated to the disciples and he said to them, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Hallelujah. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted and recovery of the sight to the blind and to set at liberty to them that are bruised. Hallelujah. And to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Glory to God. And we find that when Jesus spoke these words, hallelujah, and the same anointing, the same spirit that was upon our Savior, hallelujah, to preach the gospel is the same spirit is upon you this morning, hallelujah, upon the servants of God that have been called, chosen to deliver this great word of God that is all powerful, that can set the captive free, that can bring deliverance, hallelujah, and the recovery of those people that are blind, people that are sick, people that are crippled, they can walk, hallelujah, and all ailment in the body, every common cold, flu, hallelujah, every pandemic, every sickness, disease shall be healed in the mighty name of Jesus, because this name has authority to heal. This name has authority to deliver you. This name, Jesus, 
can set you free and he can bring deliverance in your life today. Today, hallelujah, as I speak. The Bible says in John 10, 10, the thief cometh not, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that they might have life and life more abundantly. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the reason why Jesus came to give you and I life and life more abundantly. The acceptable year of the Lord refers to God's restoration of his people from bondage, setting the captive free. Hallelujah. Heal the brokenhearted, taking away the sins of the world. There are a lot of things uh, we can add on to this, but these are the things uh, that Jesus preached while he was upon the face of the earth. Hallelujah. To bring deliverance to mankind and to set the captive free and bring healing to the body, mind, souls of, of people. Hallelujah. Let's continue. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1, and when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power. I want you to listen to me. Against unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. You see? And this is what Jesus imparted unto his disciples this morning. You are no ordinary person. You are a man and a woman that has been chosen by God and God has given you this authority and power, hallelujah, that you can lay your hands upon the sick and they shall recover. You can bring deliverance uh, to those people that are bound by the chains uh, and the shackles of the devil. You can set the captive free because you have the authority. You have the power this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, against unclean spirits. There's a lot of spirits that are operating upon the earth today. Hallelujah. You can destroy those spirits. You can break down those spirits. You can cast those spirits right out and you can set the captive free. You can bring healing to the sick, no matter what manner of sickness it is. Hallelujah. Whether it's heart condition, liver condition, kidney condition, arthritis, head condition, eye condition, ear condition, whatever condition it is, uh, you can bring healing into those bodies this morning. Hallelujah. Now, wherever you are listening, if you are sick, I want you to believe because this God is alive this morning. He's alive now and forevermore. He is looking upon your heart. He wants to call from you. He wants you to receive him so that he can do the difference in your life. He can set you free. He can heal you completely and make you whole. Hallelujah. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2, and this is what we are doing today. Hallelujah. Preach the word. Hallelujah. He said, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is a command. This is what we have to do. Hallelujah. That you claim everything in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Now I'm going to take you to the portion of scripture and I want you to increase your faith. Build up your faith right now as I go through this message. And the Bible says in the books of Acts, hallelujah. And he makes reference to great men of God. He talks about Peter and John. Hallelujah. These men were greatly, highly anointed. They felt, they know the power of God. They 
waited upon God. They feasted upon God. They seen the hand of God move. They experienced everything that you and I are experiencing today. They went through problems in life. They went through trials and temptation, all evil that was formed against them, but yet they never took their eyes away from Jesus. They never lost the vision with Jesus Christ. The Bible says they were going to the temple. The ninth hour to pray. Hallelujah. Now many of us know what, don't know what the meaning of the temple. We might have a vague idea and the, we know, we understand today, a temple is a place for, uh, to pray. It is a sacred place where people get together to worship Praise God with thanksgiving to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. People make a sacrifice of praise unto the Lord. Their knees having no shoes on their feet with their hands raised up, giving God the glory, singing praises unto his holy name. And the Bible says, a certain man that was laid from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gates of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask arms to beg. By the people that walked into the temple. Now, what do you do when you are placed into a situation like this? When you have planned uh, all the years through uh, and after you have married and then you said, well, now I'm going to plan, uh, we're going to plan to have a child. Then when the child was, uh, uh, was uh, uh, born and then you find out uh, that as the years went by, uh, that nothing happened, there was no movement in the body, in the legs, neither uh, uh, you know, in the hands, uh, and you find out the child was just breathing. I'm sure you must have been troubled in your heart. You must have questioned God through and through. And that's what many people say today. But let me tell you, in this case, uh, this child was born uh, and we found that oh, he, they couldn't do anything with him, uh, but except when he had grown up, they could take him uh, to the temple gate, uh, to the gate of the temple and leave him there to beg. Hallelujah. So whoever went into the temple, he just begged, he sat there. Hallelujah. They will bring him in the morning. They will take him back in the evening. So the Bible tells us this morning, and this is what happened to this man. For 40 years, he lay there helplessly. He was so desirous to walk into the temple and come into the temple with the rest of the people and start praising God. Now we all have that desire. Sometimes we could be put into a predicament, into a position today that we are, when we are in this terrible state, there's nothing we can do. But let me take you down the road this morning. Hallelujah. And tell you how good God is. How good God is. That imparted this ministry or this healing ministry upon his servants. And the Bible says Peter and John. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple. He started begging. Hallelujah. He said, you know, sometimes it's common today when we see a beggar on the street, we look on the other side or we just uh, cross over and walk on the other side.
But let me tell you, these men of God, they went straight to this impotent man and they looked into him. The Bible says they fastened their eyes looking at the situation that he was placed in. Straight away he told them, this man has been in this condition for a long, long time. He never walked. All the parents can do is bring him to the gates of the beautiful uh, uh, temple and leave him there to beg. Is that what God wants for you today? To be a beggar? No, my friend. We are no beggars. Hallelujah. When you got God as your uh, healer, there's no need for you to beg. When God is your provider, there's no need for you to beg. Whatever situation you are placed in this morning, Jesus is the solution to those problems in your life. Accept it. And the Bible says, and Peter, fasting his eyes upon him, what John said, look on us. That's what you have to say. Look at me. Look at yourself. How long? 40 years is a long time. You need to make the decision and say, well, I'm not going to be sitting here for much more longer. Today, let it be the day. Hallelujah. I'm not going to beg anymore. Come on, build up your faith. I'm not going to be sick anymore. I'm not going to be bedridden. I'm not going to go through the sickness. Hallelujah. I've tried everything, uh, but all things uh, failed me. But today, I'm going to put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Uh, this is a last resolution. This is a last resort. Uh, I believe that he will come in for me, and he will touch me and heal me. Glory to God. And that's what this crippled man thought in his heart. He longed to be in the beautiful temple. Hallelujah. Some of us are sitting at the gateway this morning. We cannot enter. You might not be paralyzed, but in your mindset, there is no willingness. You have no desire in your heart to go to church, to be in the presence of God, to worship him. But deep down below, you have an urgency. You could explode any time. But I want to tell you this morning, give God a chance in your life. And his name is Jesus Christ. Call upon him. He will come to your rescue. I know what I'm talking about. If God can do that to me, he can do it for you. If God can do it to the rest of the people, he can do it for you. If God can do it to this crippled man that couldn't even move, wake up and stand because there was no strength in his legs, in his body, but the only thing that he could do is to beg. But I want to say to you this morning, uh, come unto him. Hallelujah. He will pardon you. He will set you free. He will lift up every burden, every situ situation in your life, and he's going to set you free. You shall be free indeed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I speak like this, I preach like this, because I know the power of God in manifestation. When the fire comes down, he will burn up every filter, every dirt. Hallelujah. 
this morning. God wants to make something out of you, and that is uh, a witness, uh, a person that will worship God uh, and give God the praise, uh, a person that will not be shy. Uh, he will come uh, in the tabernacle and in the auditorium of God, uh, and we will praise God uh, in the spirit. Hallelujah. Now there's this man. When Peter and John looked at him, he expected that they will, uh, that he will get something out of him, out of these men. Now listen to this. Verse 6 tells us, Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I give thee. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Your healing is not about silver and gold. You might have spent a lot of money, hallelujah, and you know, going this place and that place and every other place, but nothing came to avail. This man could have tried the same thing. His parents could have tried everything and all things. Whatever people told them to go, they went and did, but nothing came to pass. But the situation got worse and worse in this man's life. What about you? Stop running around. Hallelujah. Money has no value. But let me tell you, you come to Jesus. Glory to God. All you have to do is believe. That's why Peter and John said to this man, Silver and gold have I none. Hallelujah. But as such as I have, give I thee. What have you got this morning? Hallelujah. I know we have something. And we can say the same words that Peter spoke. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Something happened. Hallelujah. The Bible says something happened. What has, has, has happened? You believe in your heart right now. The Bible says Peter's word changed that man's life. Hallelujah. Yes, friends, we have something greater to give you. And that is the healing from God. To give your life back that you can enjoy in the presence of God. That you can do things what other people can do. Now, this is what the desire of this crippled man, he desired when he seen the people going to church uh, and when he heard the sound of the music, when people were singing, uh, he also in his heart uh, was so disturbed in his spirit. But he said, one day I'm going to be in there and I'm going to be praising God and giving God all the glory. Don't give up. You know, the saying goes on, there is light at the end of the tunnel. But let me tell you, there is light in Jesus. He is the light of the world. There's no need for you to sit there. Peter's word changed a man's life. When he said, silver and gold, I do not have. I do not have. But one thing I have, and that is what I want to give to you this morning that you long for a long, long time. There's no need for you to lie on that bed. There is deliverance. There's restoration in the name of Jesus. Don't let the devil hold you down. Hallelujah. Because you are more than a conqueror in the name of Jesus. 
And then Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Do you see that the power, the determination, the force of the word that went forth in the spirit? And let me tell you, you see, you cannot give what you don't have. Hello? You cannot make promises to people when you don't have it. Hallelujah. But you can give what you have. Peter and John were confident. They had something greater. They had something supernatural. Power. Greater than money and silver and gold. Hallelujah. Nothing else. It was Christ and himself crucified. He, that preached uh, into this man's life uh, that set him free, that broke the bonds uh, of unbelief. Uh, hallelujah. So when he accepted the word that Peter spoke, something began to happen in his life. The miracle started taking place uh, and everything within him, uh, the muscles started developing, uh, the bones started shaking. Uh, hallelujah. The Bible says the ankle bone that had no strength uh, started giving strength. Uh, and now the man was glory to God. Uh, hallelujah. He was all shaken. Glory to God. There could be nothing else more that this man could have wanted. There's nothing more that you want. Hallelujah. But to be raised up from your sick bed. Hallelujah. You know, one day I was praying for a, a young lady, a, a girl, uh, and uh, it was a birthday that day. Hallelujah. And I said to the Lord, Father, the best gift that you can give to this girl today for her birthday is a healing. My friend, and God touched this girl and healed her completely and made her whole. Hallelujah. It's not about uh, monetary value. It's not about gifts. Uh, it's not about, you know, precious metals. Hallelujah. It's not about money. It's about the gift of God. Hallelujah. Initiated in the servants of God. And he said, lay your hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. We see our friend, uh, Pastor Jolly, uh, he evangelizes, he preaches the gospel, whether it's raining, uh, clouding, hot, cold, uh, he's preaching and praying for the sick in the streets. God heals them, he touches them, he makes the people to walk. Uh, this is the glory of God uh, that God has initiated. He says, in the last days, all these things will come to pass. There's no distance today. You can be in India. We can be praying from any part of the world, but God will touch you. All you have to do is believe in your heart that Jesus died for you. He took those stripes upon his body and healed all your sickness and disease. Hallelujah. The men of God said, all we have to give you today, we don't want to see you sitting here anymore. Right now, we want you to wake, wake up. And what did they do? Verse 7 tells us, and he took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. You see that? Hallelujah. Immediately, when they gave their hand and they lifted him up, his ankle bones gained strength. Verse 8 tells us, and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. You see what God can do? 
Come on, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Whatever you did in the Bible days, whatever his prophets and his disciples did in the Bible days, he does it today. Never stop. Don't be fooled. Jesus is still in authority and power through the servants of God. Hallelujah. Now listen, all the people saw him walking and praising God. They knew that it was he who sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder. Hello? Wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Hello? Come on. This is not some sort of a black magic. This is God's power. This is the healing from God. When the spirit of God descends, descends upon a man, touches them, immediately brings strength, brings the breakdown, every curse that is upon the lives. Amen. You could be sitting there. Many rituals could have uh, taken place. Many vows could have been made over your life. But nothing seemed to work out. Instead of things getting better, you got worse, 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 and worse. Many years have gone. But I want to tell you today is your day for a miracle. I want to tell you today, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be set free. You shall walk. You will not lie in that bed. You will be touched and healed of all sickness, disease that you're going through right now. We thank God for doctors. What happens when doctors fail and they say to you, go home three days time. That's the end of you. There shall be no breath in you. But I challenge you this morning, my brother, my sister, whoever you are, Jesus, he's the healer. He will touch you and heal you. Hallelujah. All you have to do is believe. And the Bible says, as a lame man which was healed, held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why ye look ye so earnestly on us? As though by our own power or holiness, we have made this man to walk. Hallelujah. That is the boldness that men and women of God have. You know, when people start looking at you and they're thinking, well, the gods have come down. No, my friend. Hallelujah. It is a great power, the Holy Ghost that breaks every yoke of bondage. Hallelujah. And the Bible says in verse 13, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, and glorified his son Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. Yes, my friend, when Jesus was brought before the judgment throne, the people shouted, hallelujah. Even when Pilate said, I find no faults in this man, and he washed his hand. But the people shouted and said, well, he's a sinner. He's an unjust man. He needs to be crucified. Hallelujah. And that's what many people say today. But no friend, this man came into this world. He would knew no sin. He became sin for you and I. He laid down his life. Hallelujah. So that you and I can be well. 
You and I can be healed of all sickness and disease. You and I can be set free. That salvation can come into our lives. And he has planned for us uh, that we shall spend eternity with him in heaven someday soon. Hallelujah. So this day, you need to choose whom you're going to serve, whether God be the God, serve him. The crippled man desired to walk with them through the beautiful gate when he had always wanted to enter. Yes, my friend, when he was always wanting to enter, but he sat there hopelessly while his physical sick body did not allow him. He sat defenseless, not what, not knowing what to do. Next. <coughs> Hallelujah. Knowing are not always healed in his lifetime. Jesus can rise you up from sitting outside the beautiful presence of God and give us a new life that allows us to enter into the glories of glory, into God's present presence. My friend, don't be tied down by the the chains and the shackles of the enemy. There is deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you, I'm here to challenge you this morning through the word of God as I stand to declare, decree, and preach this wonderful and powerful word of God. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth shall pass away but the word of God is for everlasting and everlasting. It is his word that can set you free. It is his word that can heal you. It is his word that this morning can bring deliverance. And there's no need for you to lie in you. There is, there is rest assurance. There is somebody that can come and touch you this morning and by his stripes you shall be healed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. No matter how long, how weak you may be, we indeed we need in our favor at all times. We need God in our favor. What about you today? Being bedridden, not knowing what to do anymore. You're tired. Everything people told you, but your situation got worse and worse. You find yourself struggling. You might have all the money in the world, but if you're suffering with a disease and a sickness that's incurable, only the blood of Jesus, the word of God, can destroy that sickness and make you whole again. It is only Jesus, my friend, there is no other greater name than this that we have today that we can be dependent upon. Remember, God wants you to enjoy. We are pilgrims upon the face of the earth. And today, don't be deceived. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I have good news for you today. You can be touched and be healed like this man that lay at the gates of the temple for 40 years. 
and he was touched, healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, whatever your expectancy is this morning, you're not going to have it coming from elsewhere, but you can claim your healing in the mighty name of Jesus. If God can do it for this man that was sitting there for 40 years, friend, he can do it for you. Hallelujah. There were worse cases than this. When you look into the word of God, people were brought to Jesus. When they have no entry to get into the house, their friends went onto the roof and they took the tiles off and they led the sick man right there in the middle before Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We have that love for you today. We're bringing you to a place where there's restoration, there's peace, joy, and happiness. You might not be sick, but you may be miserable in your life because nothing worked out for you. But today we bring you to the altar. We're bringing you into the presence of God. And all what we say to you, don't believe in us, but believe in Jesus Christ. He's going to make the difference in your life. Hallelujah. Let your focus be upon Jesus. Hallelujah. What about you that are backslidden? Turn your backs to a Jesus. What about you that have gone into drugs and alcohol? What about you that have forsaken the Lord Jesus Christ, denied the power thereof? What about you that walked out from the presence of God, from the church of God, when the word was preached to you? All what Jesus is saying, come back. There's room at the cross. Though millions have come, but there's still room for one. Come, my friend, as I'm coming to a close this, this morning. I feel lifted up in my spirit that God is going to do some, something to somebody today because you have believed. As I said to you, God is respect of no person. Wherever you are, God wants to meet with you. Rest assured and give you the confidence that he is your healer. Let us pray. Mighty God and Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for this opportunity that has been given to me that I can speak life into people through the medium of your word. As the spirit of God, Father, unveiled this prophetic word, Lord, to your people that are suffering. Hallelujah. You can bring the end to the suffering in your life this morning. Father, I pray that you will be moved with compassion and mercy. I speak to every backslider, Father, that will return back home. Lukewarm people, Father, this morning, I pray that you will, Lord, minister to their hearts. It's not your will that anyone should perish. I pray for those people that have been given to idolatry, serving foreign gods. Father, this morning, open their eyes. People that are sitting at the gates of, of this beautiful temple and that Lord hesitate to enter in to worship God. Father, this morning, every paralytic spirit, I cancel it in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that you will bless this ministry. Bless your servant, Pastor Charlie. Father, bless his finances. Bless every need. Father, I pray that you will take him to the next level, the next level. Father, I pray the anointing, 
the supernatural power, Lord, of God uh, will be rest assured at all time uh, that he will perform uh, great signs and wonders. Uh, Father, that he will have breakthrough, uh, hallelujah, in this ministry, that the word will touch the heart of the people. More and more people will give their life to Jesus. They will repent uh, before it's too late. Uh, they shall be baptized uh, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, they shall serve God uh, in the tabernacle uh, in the, with the set man of the house. Uh, they shall glorify God. Uh, hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity today. Your grace is sufficient for us. Bless your people, Lord. Let them come and be touched and healed. In Jesus' mighty and holy name, I ask this message. Amen and amen. Over to you, Pastor Jolly. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you for the powerful word of God. And um, Jesus Christ did the healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Healing happened in the book of Acts, chapter 3. Thank you for the powerful word of God. Reverend Dennis Narayan Sam. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the word of God. May our God bless you more and more in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray and close this session. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everybody, those who are watching all right. Bless them, Father. Thank you for your keeping in your glory, spiritually and physically, all the areas of life. Wherever the people they were watching this gospel, thank you for you are opening their inner heart so that they can discern everything what is there. They can see everything what is there in your hand so that they can see, they can come to know the, your power and glory. Every Father, I pray for the world gospel revival. I pray for all the revival. Um, thank you for your doing the revival in each country from city to city, from nation to nations. Heavenly Father, thank you for your doing according. Heavenly Father, I pray for all the people, Father, those who are standing against this gospel. Thank you for your touching their heart so that thank, thank you. you because of your miracle, so that because of the signs which you which you are shown um, in, uh, in the eyes of Apostle Paul, the same you are showed uh, to Apostle Paul, the same signs. Praise the Lord. Your power. Thank you for your revealing the people, those who stand in the opposition side, so that they can come to know you are the relieving God. This is a end time revival. So that thank you for it. You are adding that all the source at your kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, once again more, I pray for all the people are watching right now. I pray for UK, Europe, Africa, North and South America, and Asian countries. I pray for all the nations right now, Father. Thank Heavenly you. Father, thank you for your raising of the revival. Heavenly Father, I pray for the Europe, uh, South Africa. I pray for all the African countries in all the areas. Thank you for your doing the revival. I pray for the Middle East. Heavenly Father, thank you for your doing the revival. Heavenly Father, I pray for UK and Europe. Thank you for your doing the revival. The world the world is going to Shitata, patta, kalla, tu, rakana. Any of the sick people, infirmities, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your touching them. That healing happened. Arthritis removed right now. Heart block in the name of Jesus removed right now. In Jesus' name, fatty liver gout right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. All the situations, all the body um, structure, all the functions in the body, the people are watching, having a uh, right. few, few people are watching right now, having the problems in their body. That means heart, too much heart temperature. Affecting the core in the inner heart in your body. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it come in the normal temperature. All the work of the parts of the body, let it come in the normal work in the name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, once again more I pray for in Jesus' name for me and our ministry, which the ministry which you are given to us. Thank you for your raising of using this ministry. Thank you. Uh, you using everybody through this me uh, people, those who are here in a mighty way. Heavenly Father, I pray for all the people supporting this ministry by seed and by prayer. I pray for them right now. Amen. Thank you for your blessing them all. Once again more, I pray for each one of them. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. So, uh, may our God bless you more and more. In Jesus' name, the couple of prayer requests, I pray for Jolie Vargas, Solomon Agustin, and uh, Biju Yohanan. Ajay Gosh, and people are joined here, uh, and everybody will send the prayer request. Um, let me check up.
some or how many people send the prayer request and to take uh, comments and people send the comments and let me take it uh, let me take it praise the lord pray for everybody in the name of jesus one by one i pray for everybody praise the lord hallelujah i cannot take it everything okay so that everybody may our god bless you everybody in jesus name i pray amen thank you very much thank you